Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to today's episode of the Live, Train, Perform podcast. I'm your host, Sean Koba. During today's episode, we are going through my five-minute fitness tips. So it's a quick and dirty five-minute uh, tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your fitness. Last week, I spoke about RAMP, which is raise, activate, mobilize, and potentiate. And this is the protocol that I use to get the most out of my warm-up. Most people, when they go into the gym, they jump on a bike or a treadmill or something like that. They scroll through Instagram and they just go through the motions. Yes, it's better than nothing, but there's a much, much better way of uh, priming your body to get the most out of your training session. So uh, in today's episode, I'm going to be going through ramp in a little bit more detail and touching on what each one of those letters stands for. Let's get started. So the R stands for raise. So this is raise the heart rate respiratory rate, core temperature, blood flow to working muscles and viscous fluid to specific joints. Now, the raise exercises that I like to use are very simple, okay? Gait patterns, crawling patterns, okay? So gait is our walk, crawling patterns are like animal flow, animal movement type um, exercises, um, anything that's kind of going to get the heart rate up. Now, we shouldn't be spending too much time here. Uh, just a couple of minutes just to elevate the core temperature and all of those things that I spoke about. Then we go into our activate work, okay, which is where we're looking to prime the muscles and connect and contract the specific muscles that we're trying to target for the training session, okay, regardless of whether that's a strength session, a power session, a speed session, endurance session, um, conditioning session, cardio session, etc. Okay, so we want to target those specific muscles and some exercises that I like to use here, if I want to target the glutes, for example, I like to do cable pull-throughs or I might do some um, banded walks, I might do some glute bridges. Uh, if I want to target the hamstrings, I might do some hamstring curls or some drag curls using glide boards on some turf or some carpet or something like that. Um, if I want to activate my chest, then I'm going to get into a push-up position. And when I'm in that push-up position, I'm looking to lower under control where I'm focusing on eccentrics, which is muscles lengthening, and I'm lowering under control. And I'm also thinking about squeezing my hands towards each other to create as much tension through the chest and the shoulders as I can. Okay, If I'm looking at firing up through the back, then I might simply do some seated cable rows or some banded rows or bent over rows or something like that and i'm really just focusing on firing up the musculature of the back okay then i want to go into some mobilization work and this is specific to the training session that i've got coming up so if i'm doing some sprint work for example then i want to start switching off my hip flexors because if my hip flexors are firing because i've been sitting all day then my hip extensors being my glutes and hamstrings the primary movers of a sprint are not going to be firing as much as they possibly can okay and they are the muscles that should be driving that movement so the mobility work i'm going to switch off the hip flexors i might might do some foam rolling some soft tissue work i might do some static stretches some dynamic stretches um, etc okay and then again if i'm doing an upper body movement particularly if i'm doing an upper body pull or an upper body push then I'm going to start mobilizing the shoulders. Most people have uh, rounded shoulders and their head juts forward, um, which is called upper cross syndrome, which I have a video on my YouTube channel um, to address that. Okay, so basically what I want to do is switch off what's tight and strengthen what's weak. If I'm going overhead, I want to switch off my traps. I want to switch off my pecs and my delts and probably my lats as well. So again, I'm probably going to do some soft tissue work there. Um, I'm going to do some static stretches, maybe some dynamic stretches, um, depending on what my body actually needs to prime myself for that training session. Okay, then I'm going to go into some potentiate work. And again, if I'm using sprints, then I might do some very simple, like five to 10 meter shuttle runs or some sprint work where I'm, you know, doing some activation work, stability based work, some hip airplanes to fire up all the stabilizers. And then I might go into some very short, sharp sprints or some sled sprints or something like that. Okay, um, and if I'm doing a strength session, then I'm going to use my build-up sets, my ramp-up sets as my potentiate or practice. Okay, um, I've got an example of a very good warm-up flow that I like to do with not only my clients, um, my fighters, my PT clients, my one-on-one gen pop um, clients, 
but also with myself to address the hips and the shoulders and the core. So if you go onto my YouTube channel, Performance Functional Training, and you type in warm-up mobility or warm-up flow, uh, that will come up with a really solid uh, warm-up program to go through your raise, activate, mobilize, and potentiate. And for me, I like to choose just a couple of exercises that are going to implement all of those things to get my body firing and get everything working on point to set me up for the training session. That's it for me today, guys. Tune in next week where we'll go into a little bit more detail and give some more examples of how to use ramp to get the most out of your warm-up. Peace.